Welcome back to the channel, Be Free. This is Josh. Um, Josh knows what he's talking about. He is experienced. Then you've got me. Thought I looked pretty fuckable in this, to be honest. Um, but this is what I normally look like. I normally look like shit. <laughs> <laughs> this vlog works whether you are a beginner, intermediate or experienced. We've got a uh, Husky TDI 140i. Very important because there's different makes, okay? And then we've got a KTM um, EGKTM <laughs> that is also a 2022. Wait, what was this one? What is it? <laughs> The Husqvarna TE150i TPI version 2022 KTM XEW 150 TPI. I nearly got, I didn't do very well on that one. Right, so there's some variances between the two and that's what we're going to talk about. Both bikes are basically brand new. So the Husky's got two hours and 15 minutes on it. And the KTM's got four hour, four and a half hours. They've both had the first service. Both bikes, both have six speed transmission. They both come with electric start and kick start, which is very helpful. Get you out of a lot of trouble if anything goes down. Um, so for example, now obviously you can tell that I'm very bike orientated and I clearly know what I'm doing. Um, we do have someone that actually knows what they're doing behind the camera. But so the difference is in the Husky, the subframe, subframe. Now the subframe is the arse end of the frame. Okay, not this bit of the frame, the arse end of the frame. This one is made of posh light material. So it's obviously lighter, it's better for handling the bike, but it does brake more easily. Okay, this one on the KTM you can't actually see it because it's behind the paneling, but it's just behind here. This is heavier, doesn't break as easily. Yeah? Yeah? Oh, I, think, I thought it sounded quite good then. Right. Uh, when it comes to the frame, you get a point for the Husky. Yeah? No, we don't get a point on the frame. <laughs> Fuck. Right. So the Husqvarna is made, the, the subframe is made out of 70% plastic yeah. and 30% carbon yeah. fibre, so it's a little, little bit lighter weight, yeah. but with carbon fibre, it just shatters. Right. So on the four corners, this yeah. corner, the yeah. same far corner in yeah. the top points, yeah. they tend to snap. Right. As okay. on the yeah. KTM, they've got an aluminium subframe, yeah. so it's still light, but it's more durable. Okay. So it can withstand more okay. hard conditions. So, clearly, because I know what I'm talking about, let me start that bit again. So, Husky on the frame, point goes to the TMX, TZX, KTM, KCM. K right, so this is an issue. So, on this bike, um, obviously, on these bikes, on what you're doing, you're going to end up coming off them, yeah? If you're using them for the off roading, for log hopping and things like that, you're gonna come off them. First time it went down, not even badly, just the first time it went down, the clutch cable, no, the clutch bracket. Master cylinder. The master, the clutch master cylinder snapped. Snapped? Snapped, right. So that's pretty shit, okay? So they're designed okay. to snap there, right. but some reason it snapped underneath on the actual oh, main sure, perch. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't know if you can see it. Yeah, you can see yeah. it just there. Yeah. Okay. So and it's supposed to look like that. Okay. All right. So that obviously really fucking irritated Josh when he was out. out. Um, so that's going back to the supplier to get fixed. No? No. Just ignore what I've said, but it's just be aware of it that it snapped easily, yeah? So after. It's done two hours, 15 minutes. Yeah. It was, I was on it for 26 minutes and just lost my positioning and dropped the bike. Yeah. It wasn't even a bad crash and it snapped straight away. So I've got in touch with Husqvarna and they are not going to do anything about it. Oh. Uh, so I've had to buy another one myself uh, at 209 pound. Okay, so going on to the KTM then. So the KTM, is this at the same risk as the Husky of 
snapping. Potentially, but not as easy. So if you look at the mounting points on this, yeah. how it goes over onto two nuts yeah. instead of on a hinge. Okay. So with the two nut design, it's yeah. a little bit more sturdy. Okay. Right. So there's definitely not as much chances of it breaking as there was with the brake tech which brake tech on the new Husqvarna is a new thing that they've used. Normally they use Brembo or Megora. Hang on, I don't understand what you're saying. What's, what's brake tech and Brembo? And uh, brake tech's the make of brakes they've used. So the the, the, the front brake, yeah. the rear, the clutch, yeah. the rear brake, yeah. which is down here. Okay. And then the, the actual casings themselves. Okay. The it's made by another company. Yeah, the okay. brake tech okay. is on the KTM. Uh, which they use Brembo yeah. everywhere else. Yeah. Husqvarna used to use the same. Yeah. They've also tried Megora as well, but obviously right. straight away it's not as good. Okay, so when it comes to the clutch bracket, bracket point goes to the KTM. So it's 2 0. It's not looking good for the Husky. And you brought a Husky. Okay. So next on the Husky, we're going to talk about the uh, um, uh, spring, the suspension, suspension. This has got linkage, linkage, okay? So this is more designed for enduro, which means hardcore going up hills, jumping over shit, okay? The KTM has a, it's, it's not more linkage, it's, it's oh, PTD. PDT, PTSD. PDS. PDS. <laughs> it's not got PTSD, it hasn't been in war. Um, PDS, which I don't know what that means, but I do know that it means that this, the KTM is more designed for motocross, not as much enduro, but you can do the both on it. But the, it's, it's not, you can't do as much enduro, like brutal jumps and hills and things because the suspension isn't as good. Is that right? Is that not right? Sort of. Go on then, give, give me your version. So the XCW is a mix between motocross and enduro, yeah. and the SX is just motocross. So this is this is basically the mix between all, all, all the bikes into one. Oh, okay, so this is more diverse. Yeah, right, so okay. you, can, you can, it's basically designed for do it more stuff, but as the Husky so far is designed just for Enduro, but you can still ride it on track and it won't really affect the bike that much. Okay, so when it comes to suspension, point goes to... Oh, the Husky! Oh, it's got one! It's got, right, point to Husky, so we're 2-1 on the points. The only doubtful is, yeah. is the linkage on, on the bottom. Yeah. So that's the linkage underneath here. So obviously you can hit more rocks with it. Oh, right, okay. So a lot of people put like a protector on yeah, are you to stop to? that yeah so that's probably a downfall for it is it can hit more it damage it and it's not cheap okay. as on the ktm yeah. as it links up to the top yeah. there's nothing oh, yeah. dangling on the bottom oh hang on a minute okay i get it excited about this bit because i understand it okay so on the ktm and the husky the exhausts are the same design however They've just changed it a bit. So obviously different branding. This one's the brushed metal. This one's the black. Okay. Next bit. I also understand this bit, so I'm very excited about this. We're going to talk about tyres. Right. When you buy the Husky, you get Michelin. Okay. When you buy the KTM, you get Maxxis. Now, this is not sponsored where no one can head when it comes to sponsors, okay? We're team Michelin, all right? I've worked as a transport specialist, Michelin all the way, you get a better grip with them. So when you buy the, so KTM in this case doesn't get the point, Husky gets the point when it comes to tyres. But obviously if you do want to buy Michelin, I'm sure you can. Yeah, okay, you can, yeah. Okay, going on to handlebars. Okay, so both bikes come with stock handlebars, okay? However, what, what Josh has done on his Husky is he's changed them to, I want to say PT, PS. Right. No way. <laughs> right. Oh, it's even written there. Rent, sorry, right. He's changed his to these 
handlebars because they are wider and higher and that's comfortable for him when he's riding. But this is really important because we have found when working with people that people don't understand that when you get these bikes, you need to adapt them to you. So you, when, you go, when you first get your bike, even if you buy second hand, you need to have a go and then you can adjust the handlebars. Just the handlebars? Can you adjust other stuff? You can adjust pretty much anything on the bike. Like the seat and stuff like that. Yeah, so you can, we'll stick with handlebars, right? So you can, it's actually quite easy to adjust them. But my advice is, because of the value of these bikes, if you don't know what you're doing, speak to a professional. But definitely, if you're new to this, or if you've never adjusted your bike to your riding position, style, try it. It will make a huge difference to your performance. Map switch, okay? So on the Husky, there is one. On the KTM, there isn't. So definitely point for the Husky on this. So a map switch is, I'm gonna explain it like bird that doesn't know much about bikes, right? So in my head, it's like when you've got the gears on a push bike. So if you put it into switch two, it, when you change down or up, no, let me go, I'll have a go. When it's in number two and you change it down or up, it can be a bit boggy, but if it's wet conditions, that can be helpful. If it's in switch one, it goes faster. Do you want to give the real version? <laughs> You're pretty much right there, to be fair. Yeah, so oh, map yeah. one's a lot smoother when it goes into power band, so there's no lag. And then map two, it'll lag a little bit. So potentially, if it's boggier conditions, when it bogs, it's not going to be spinning up as fast, so you'll get a little bit of extra traction as well. So when you're competing, you use this? Uh, I don't really use it. I always keep it in the fastest one. But right. for like more beginner riders, okay. it probably would help them out by pointing map two. Oh, okay. Just until you get used to the bike okay. or whatever. Okay, so point Husky. Okay, I'm just going to say right from the off, I'm going to fuck this up. Okay, I'm going to fuck it up, there's no question. Because I'm about to talk about engines. So, in a two, in a motorbike, you don't normally get engine braking because in a two-stroke, you don't get engine braking, but in a four-stroke, you do. Now, these are both two-strokes. Yeah, yeah, they're both two-strokes. The KTM has engine braking for some reason. The Husky doesn't. So my understanding is this means that this is just not as good. It's just not as good. The guys don't like it as much. Um, so the Husky gets a point because it doesn't have engine braking. But I don't understand because as a person that likes safety, surely I'd want engine braking. Why don't I want engine braking? So we've always been two stroke lads. We don't really ride four strokes. So I suppose if you're a four stroke guy, moving across to it you, you might like it you'll be more used to it okay. with us we've rode car braided two strokes yeah. that's all i've ever pretty much rode so moving to the fuel injection system uh, i was riding mine and it doesn't have it it rides just like a car braided bike with a lot more low-end torque as the ktm when we were riding that it's got downhill it, it's got um, engine braking so when you're going downhill and stuff, when you're not used to the down, when you're not used to the engine braking kicking in, oh, it's sort of really? like right. so it's sort of like throwing you over the bars a little bit. Right. Okay. Right. So engine braking means that there's something in the system that does it automatically. Yeah. So when you let off, basically it's slowing the car. Like, it, so say if you're in a car and yeah. you let off, yeah. it sort of like slows down, yeah, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah. yeah. So that's what engine braking is. Right. So on a two-stroke, normally with like a car braked two-stroke, or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. When you let off, it won't engine brake, it'll carry on rolling. Right. It'll slow down, but yeah. not right. jutter. Like, like. Right, okay. So, point husky. Yeah, but then again, it, it, this is all per, like personal, choice. personal preference yeah, personal of choice. what yeah. you like. So, yeah. I, we haven't put a lot of hours on these bikes yet. Um, but I, So, the Husqvarna is my bike, and the KTM is my pal's bike, and he's, we've swapped bikes for half an hour or so of riding and he's selling the ktm to go for husky because we're just not personally used to it again, again personal yeah. preference so, i do think that's a good point that everything we're saying is so you can understand the differences but it's obviously our personal opinion and based on the fact that i don't know what the fuck i'm talking about i'm obviously being influenced by josh um but this is just so you're aware and then 
both engines are pretty much the same on both bikes with a stroke of 54 and a half millimeter and a bore size of 58 millimeter we're not saying either bike is shit we're just saying these are the differences yeah it's just personal like. experiences yeah. of owning the think. bikes so ktm like still lovely but we're kind of team husky okay i've got something i could talk about i've got brace yourself right so the ktm follow me please you know gonna be impressed ktm headlight is different to the husky uh obviously like i'm like always oh, a different shape i don't know the real reason but you prefer the ktm to the husky don't you i thought you oh bollocks i was trying to be nice to the ktm so you actually prefer the husky? I prefer, I prefer the shape of it, but again, that's just looks-wise. It, it does no difference whatsoever. It's just looks personally. It's like a per -per how it sticks out and how square it is. All right. Um, but again, personal preference. Okay, so there's no difference in performance? It's no just difference, yeah. Okay, right. Okay, I right. I'm, I'm a bit confused because we're just doing the next section on Josh attempting to teach me something so I can explain it and fuck it up. So it's just explained to me that on these you have to like in my head I'm like you go to a garage, you twizzle your nozzle, you put your fuel in. No, not on these. You have to do some sort of mix. No. no so on carbureted bikes, uh, you have to mix. Carbureted? So this is this is a TPI. This How do is. I know? Uh, by the by the throttle body and stuff, so all the throttle body and everything's down there. Right. It's just a new technology they're bringing out. But you can tell by looking at it, it's carbureted. No, th this this is a TPI. So how can I, how do I know as someone that's buying a new bike whether I've got a mixed fuel or not? By the top containers, it'll it'll say when you're buying the bike either way. Okay. So on a carbureted bike, you have to pre-mix the fuel. So say. When I had my old, my, my old bike was a, a TM, well, that yeah. was carbureted. Uh, yeah, carbureted, sorry. Um, so mine was five litres of fuel to 125 mil two stroke. Oil? Yeah. So where does so the fuel you, go in? Your fuel goes in your main tank, yeah. and then your oil, which is your two stroke, goes right. in the top tank. Right. So you flip that up, yeah. twist it, yeah. and then top it up. Okay. So that goes into there, which yeah. runs through the frame, yeah. and it goes into that little bottle here. Oh, yeah. a little, little bottle yeah, yeah. there yeah. which runs through your line and everything then which okay. is just there I don't know okay. if you can see it coming up yeah. okay. which then goes inside the throttle body which then squirts in with your fuel and mixes it mixes right, okay. as the bike's running okay. as a carbureted bike doesn't do that so you mix it in with your fuel so when it goes into the carb which then squirts into the engine it's already mixed right hang on a second so the this you've got two separate things yeah right on the other one it, you can't put oil into the fuel you do yeah you, it mixes you it's two me? it's two stroke oil so it's not like the car oil oh right okay so it's like posh oil yeah so it, so if i didn't have this one with whatever letters it is mm -hmm. i would have to when i went to fuel up i'd have to undo this put in my fuel yep. and put in oil yep i never even knew that what the fuck what if people forget it a bike guy won't forget. If you, if you do forget to put it in and you run it just on yeah. fuel, yeah. you'll blow the engine. Oh. Same as this. So it's exact yeah. same as this. If I don't fill that up and it goes dry, yeah. the engine will seize. Okay, so I have questions then because a lot of people with cars, mm -hmm. men and women, don't check their oil as often as they should. Right? It's different oil. Yeah, versus. I know, but my point is people don't check it. But so they don't have it. It's only two strokes. Yeah, I know, but it's still like checking oil on a car, isn't it? You still have to check it. But what my point is, a lot of people don't. So there must be incidents where people get these and they don't get this education because they buy it second hand and they've got one for a first time and they don't understand how important this is. Because I wouldn't have known that. Or, or are you, so you're basically saying if you've grown up with them, you just know. Yeah. Okay, much. but this vlog, hopefully people that don't have a clue will be learning something like me. <laughs> Maybe, hopefully. Okay, cool. So right. your engine oil, yeah. which Charlie's on about is actually in here. Okay. So both of them hold the exact same, with like say technically the same engine anyway, oh, which okay. is eight, so, yeah. so 800 yeah. mil. So you, that's where you fill it up. Yeah. Take that cap off, that's where you top Where's it up. Where's my um, dipstick? Uh, they don't have one, so you just use a measuring jug. Okay. To drain it, the nut is just 
too short, I can't see the camera up there. So un undo that, your oil will come out. Yeah. Tip the bike on its side a little bit later, all fully drain out. Change the little copper washer, put it back in, and then top it up from the other side, which I've just shown you. And is this the same on the KTM? It's actually same on the KTM, yeah. Okay. Okay, cool. But it will differ depending which make and model bike. Oh, yeah, yeah. Good point. Yeah. So check your manuals for before you listen to us. Yeah, speak to a professional. Check your manuals. It's just our opinion. Brilliant. Okay. We're going to talk about heights and weights. Okay. So the seat height on both is the same at 990, 98. 96. 950. 950. I'm kind of close on the first one. The height from here to the this bit that you don't want to hit is the same on both, which is 370. 370. But the interesting bit for me is, especially for me riding the bike, is the weight. Okay. So the Husky is 99.6. Um, this is 96.8. I fucking nailed it. So, 0.4 KTM, because I think lighter is better, um, but I am pretty feeble, so I, you know, for me, the weight of these would be a problem. So, yeah, point, point KTM. Prices. Okay, so the prices for both bikes is actually that's really similar. It depends on the dealership you go to. So, they're about £8,700, so these, you know, this is quite a pricey kit. Um, our preference at B3 is we are Team Husky, okay? But again, it's personal preference. So we are, we, you know, we are just giving you our opinion. It's completely up to you what you spend your money on. This is just supposed to be like helpful information and for me to learn some more. So we are Team Husky. Okay, oops, sorry, I got something in my eye. Right, how to mount your bike. So, I used to horse ride, so you always start on the left, okay? Um, take your handles, but I can't, I've, I've got arthritis in my shoulder, so I can't hold both handles. So, place one hand on the seat, and then you get your leg up. It's on it. Did you see it? Position and you're on. <laughs> 